Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas, and we're here today with the uh, ESOP Rebel 205 AC-DC machine. Um, so, from back by popular demand, people are asking about a project or what could be my first aluminum project. So, today I got a little aluminum project that you can try and make, uh, whether you're a novice or you're an uh, experienced TIG welder, uh, something good to try out. And then we're going to do a follow-up on Q&A at the end on some questions and I'll have answers for everything that we haven't really answered along the way. But starting out first, let's go over this project here. So today we're gonna make a little bit of, uh, we got two pieces of angle iron, aluminum, and just one piece of flat sock. So what I'm gonna try and make today is a uh, cell phone holder. So you've seen those um, little holders for like your, your phone in your car, that kind of thing. So this thing's gonna hold your phone, something like that and uh, you can watch more of my YouTube videos. So let's try this thing out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the little pieces of angle, um, reverse, so one side down like that, the other one like this, and this is gonna be a little bit of a backer to hold the phone if you wanna stand it upright. So let me get working on this, and uh, we're always gonna use our stainless steel brush on aluminum. Uh, I got some Alcotec filler rod here, so we're good to go. Let's flip this machine on. Now remember on uh, TIG welding, 100% argon. My flow rate's about 35 cubic feet an hour. Um, we got clarity set up. So we got our, we got it set up here. When you get to the home screen, you're gonna, it's always gonna come on right out of the box, SMIG. You wanna toggle over to AC TIG. It's gonna tell you your setup, already set up like that, confirm. So I got it at 120 amps and 75% on the balance. That's a good middle of the road setting. If you want to change some of those settings, you just toggle over to them and you can change everything. But right now we're just gonna run the 120, 75%. So let me clean these up. You want to go in one direction when you're cleaning the aluminum. Um, when you're cleaning with your brush, always start at one end and keep going and then don't go back and forth. So what it does, it keeps all your lines in the same direction. Just a cleaner, provides a, makes for a better weld, let's say that. All right, so now I got the pieces cleaned up. We're gonna line them up here. And like I said, it's pretty simple. All I'm doing, I got three pieces of aluminum. It's a pretty simple project. Just two pieces of angle, like I said. We're gonna line them up. And then what I'll do here, get everything lined up. Grab my torch. And all I'm doing right now is just gonna tack the sides, so. So you can see there, I just put a little corner tack on that side. Nothing major, all I did was Push the pedal all the way to the floor. It gives you that sudden, that nice constant arc, and it uh, gives you enough heat to fuse the two pieces together without using any filler rod. Let me try this. Tack that side there. All right. So now that we got that kind of set up. So I cut those pieces a little bit longer than the phone. Just, just wanted to have a little extra room. And on this piece here, we're just gonna try and make a little stand here. Let me, let me clean this piece up. I'm gonna do my best to center everything. I mean, I'm just throwing this thing together, so it looks pretty centered. All right, we're gonna tack this piece on.
Here's essentially what we're going for there. So you can hear that fan kicked on on this unit. That fan, a lot of questions that came and rose with this is why is that fan so loud? It is, it's, it's really, really loud. So to achieve the duty cycle that this machine says it can put out output, that fan has to be, it's an on-demand fan, so that fan has to be move that much air. So it's that's why it's so loud. It's it's a it's a big fan inside inside of a little unit. It's just moving air past the the circuit board inside, so it doesn't overheat. But all right, so the fan's probably going to kick on because we're going to do some continuous welding here. I was just tacking it up. So basically, you can see our shape that we're going for pretty simple and then I put that little backer there so it'll hold that phone up um, let's hope that works all right let's try it out here I just put a little weld there in the corner. I'm not trying to go all the way across. We just, we don't need a real strong weld on this thing, so we just try. I don't know if you saw that, I had to move that piece so that fan is kicking out so much air it actually blew my, ar my argon shielding gas away and caused a little disturbance on my arc there. Um, just be, be aware of where you're at with that fan, but we're in a tight corner here, so. All right, so there's there's a little project, uh, pretty simple. I only put three welds on there and that center weld's pretty small. Um, keep that in mind as your first little project to hold the phone to watch more of my YouTube videos. All right, so hopping over to the Q&A part. Um, this thing's actually working out already. I can read the questions, popular by you know, popular questions from you guys. So the first one on my list here is can you leave the MIG gun and TIG torch connected at the same time with the 205? You cannot. So the TIG torch is hooked to the negative terminal, and in the positive terminals are ground. So that they both have to come out. Your, your power lead going to your power block for your MIG goes in the positive, and then the ground goes in the negative. So you can't leave them hooked up. Um, it's not much to swap them out though. I mean, really, it's, it's, it's just a quick twist and they come right out. So it's, it's very little time to do that. Uh, can, does it have a dual gas solenoid? Yes, it does. So it has a TIG spool gun gas solenoid and it has a, uh, just a regular uh, MIGS gas solenoid. On the front of our machine, there's a gas block. Took the TIG torch up to. Next question is, Pre and post flow adjustment. Yes, there is. You got to get into the settings um, and put in an advanced mode, which is where you can open up more more options. And then there's a pre flow and a post flow. I think the pre flow come up can't comes up as like 0.2 seconds. Post flow is supposed to be one second for every 10 amps. So say you're running 120 amps, it's supposed to be 12 seconds. I think we only had it set for 10 seconds on post flow. Not a big deal though. TIG amperage on the two. 205 starts at 5 whereas the Miller starts at 20 amps what what would the allow what would the lower allow me to do what's the advantages what's the disadvantages so this machine goes all the way down to 5 amps and that Miller the Multimatic goes down to 20 
So the lower the amperage, the thinner the material. I've only ever really seen it on thin pieces of stainless or thin pieces of mild steel. So the lower amperage allows you to weld thinner pieces of material. Um, no real disadvantages to it. It's more of an advantage in my eyes. But uh, so the next question, tips for starting starting the arc. What tungsten do you use and recommend for the beginner? So when you're starting your arc and we got it hooked up and it's got high freak, our foot pedal and everything, you want to be about a quarter inch to eighth inch to a quarter inch off the plate and that high freak should jump the arc across. The tungsten I recommend is 2% serrated. Just a good all around tungsten for just beginners to experts. I mean, it really does work well. Um, good tungsten. So next question. Can you plug a CK torch directly into the Rebel 205? So I'll have more with that to come. Uh, after, the, after this video, we're gonna have a link down below. Uh, we're getting assortments of parts and adapters that we can do that too, but we're working on that right now. Next question, can you upgrade the MIG gun? Yes, to a tweak. Can you upgrade the MIG gun? And yes, you can upgrade the MIG gun to a Tweco Fusion 250 with the velocity consumables and others. So yes, you can upgrade the MIG gun from what it standard comes with. Next question on here is, can you upgrade the TIG torch? Yes, you can upgrade that TIG torch to a TXH201 with the hand control on the handle. And that runs about 165 bucks. So not too bad. Um, next question is, what kind of DINS connection does it have? Is it a 50 millimeter? Yes, it's a 50 millimeter DINS connection. And that's what, uh, so they have 25, 50. This is a 50 millimeter. Um, next question. What, and this one's kind of a, a, a loaded question. So running the machine on 110 versus 220. So if you set it up for 110, it changes some parameters. Um, you can't get as high as duty cycle on 110 and you need a good power source for 110 So when I say power source, you want to be close to your breaker box You don't want to have a long run of extension cord too long of an extension cord I should say and if you do have an extension cord you want to have a good extension cord So we recommend 12 or 10 gauge extension cord on 110 to run this um, Right now we're plugged into 220 though uh, I've ran it on 110 and it works just fine. But like I said, you got to have a good power source um, I've tripped breakers before because we were too far away or we had too long of an extension cord hooked up to it. Um, so the uh, noise was another question that popped up. Why is this thing so damn loud? So I covered that when we were welding, the fan kicked on. Um, it's just to achieve the duty cycle that they say this thing will put out as all it's for. Um, I know it's loud. Would I buy it? Yes, still a good machine. Um, the fan doesn't really hinder your welding ability, other than it did blow away my shielding gas. Um, so the final question I ha had was, is it in stock? Absolutely, they're in stock now. Um, we've sold over 200 of these units. And have we had any trouble or have they came back for repair or anything like that? Yes, there's been a few. Um, but ESOP's backed it up 100%. Can't discredit them for anything on, on service-wise as far as getting the machines to the people. If something was broke, handles, boards, that kind of thing, they took care of everything. So the service backing it is up, is great. Um, we did have some, though, that were um, had problems coming right out of the box. And then one of the last things that I wanted to talk about is People uh, that buy this unit, they, they always ask me, well, 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 how's it compared to a Dynasty, what, 350 or 280 or 400, you know, the, the, all those three units. So if you're used to welding on a Dynasty 350 or 400, it is not a Dynasty 350 or 400 because the duty cycle, it just, it can't reach those amperages. But as you saw today, we were welding at 120 amps. Do you really go above 120 amps? Do you go above 200 amps? If you don't, I mean, it's hard to say. You know, everyone expects the world out of this little unit, but for three grand, you're getting a heck of a deal. You're getting all three processes plus AC TIG on it. You can't complain about that. And I mean, I know there's some things that this thing doesn't do great, and there's others that it does do great. Um, but when you're buying this whole total package with, say, we're going to call it four processes because you got AC TIG, you're going to do all of them 
good. All those things are good. Not one of them is going to be better than the other one, I shouldn't say, and, and it's not going to do all of them the greatest that it can do. So if you have a designated, let's say, 350p MIG welder, no, this doesn't weld like a 350p MIG welder because it's not, it's a multi-process unit. But this is your 350p stick weld and AC TIG weld? No. So you gotta take that into consideration. Don't expect the world out of this unit, but this thing does work. It works great. I'm impressed with the AC TIG output on it. Um, it's amazing. I mean, really, it's for what it is, it's amazing. And um, great little home hobby unit. So thanks for watching my video, I really appreciate it. So you can use this little project to watch my YouTube videos or get on bakersgas.com. We just launched a new website, get on there and check it out. It's a lot more user friendly on your phone. Um, works great, I was just surfing it here, checking out the Rebel. Uh, but stay tuned for more videos and thanks for tuning in.